Proceed. <clears throat> so good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are in this bright, beautiful world. Uh, my name is Eleanor Thornton, also known as ET. Uh, I'm a senior international trade specialist in the Center for Economics and Market Development at USAID. I oversee the work of E-Trade Alliance along with my colleague, Paul Fekita, who unfortunately could not join us today, which is why you're stuck with me. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you to today's webinar on behalf of USAID and the E-Trade Alliance. We are absolutely thrilled uh, to have you join us for this important conversation on unlocking MSME growth through public-private partnerships. I, I first want to thank our USAID colleagues joining from overseas. Uh, we appreciate your time, engagement, and support. We know how important those are, and we very much value them. Thank you to our private sector partners who make our work possible, especially those who have taken the time to participate in today's discussion and who have so much information and knowledge and experience um, that I urge you to ask them questions uh, uh, at the end of the uh, uh, webinar, uh, at the end of their presentations. I would also like to extend our gratitude to Market Links for hosting this event and providing a platform for our discussion I want to give you a quick overview of the E-Trade Alliance in, in case you have not been familiar with uh, the Alliance um, to give you a little bit of background. Uh, the E-Trade Alliance is one of USAID's flagship public-private partnerships, a Global Development Alliance, or GDA, as we like our acronyms, bringing together leading private sector partners to expand trade and foster growth for micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises in developing countries. We co-invest with partners to implement activities that support MSME digital development, fostering increased engagement in local e-commerce ecosystems, and provide learnings that help private and public stakeholders more effectively implement e-commerce development. We are, part, we are a partnership in its truest form, working closely to pilot and scale solutions that enable MSMEs to participate in e-commerce and digital, digital trade. Uh, I just want to point out here that as we have all seen, um, digital trade is becoming uh, a, a must and increasingly important, especially with the, the continued growth and advent of artificial intelligence. So something very important for uh, anybody in uh, the private sector uh, engaging in trade uh, to become a part of. So far, the Alliance has supported over 7,000 MSMEs across Sub-Saharan Africa, Central Asia, Asia Pacific, and Latin America. MSMEs have gained access to technology solutions, improved their management practices, and experienced growth in sales and exports. Through the 12 dialogues we facilitated, the Alliance has convened over 1,300 public and private stakeholders to exchange policy ideas, and global best practices to promote MSME e-commerce. USAID missions have played a crucial role coordinating all the dialogues, as well as many of the pilot activities we've implemented. For example, the Alliance closely worked with missions in El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras to develop and implement skills development programs for MSMEs in Central America. Through a buy-in with, with <laughs> through a buy-in with West, USAID West Bank in Gaza, the Alliance is accelerating the growth of e-commerce by promoting the use of digital payments. And through the recently launched Prosper Africa Tech for Trade Alliance, we are currently piloting technology solutions and skills development programs in Kenya and Nigeria. These were also implemented with the support of their respective missions. To this end, the Alliance seeks to deepen our collaboration with missions so that we can effectively tailor initiatives to the specific needs and opportunities within each region. Missions can help bridge the gap between global strategies and local realities so that our efforts are both impactful and sustainable. Um, so that's the overview. Um, today, we're going to hear from our private sector partners who have been instrumental in our achievements about what makes the Alliance an effective partnership for driving MSME growth. We hope that today's discussions will also illuminate opportunities for missions to partner with the Alliance. So with that, I'll turn it over to Kati, who is the person. Thanks very much, E.T. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining from around the world. Kathy Suominen, I'm the founder and CEO of Next Trade Group and the technical director of the E-Trade Alliance. 
I've been with the Alliance from the beginning and very pleased to um, have uh, so many missions and um, implementing partners also join us. This is really for you to learn about how the Alliance can support your work and help you in your efforts to work with the private sector. Um, as you know, we bring together um, by now 14 leading technology companies uh, from around the world and um, um, three of them are here with you uh, today. Um, and uh, we would love to deepen our work with, with implementing partners, other USA projects, as well as um, with, uh, with the missions in general, as, as E.T. mentioned. Um, so with us today uh, is a fabulous panel of Alliance partners. I'm very pleased to introduce them. Uh, Maria Luisa Boyce, who is Vice President for UPS uh, Global Public Affairs. Uh, we have Christian Finkelstein, who is the Director of the E-Commerce Institute from uh, Buenos Aires and Chris Otundo, who is the CEO of Brighter Monday from Kenya. So thanks all for, for joining and sharing more about your work. Um, I'll turn it over to Maria Luisa with the, with the, um, uh, to, to learn a little bit more about her um, experience uh, in the Alliance, um, how you know, UPS has, working, uh, has been working for five years now with the Egypt Alliance implementing various programs, also working very much on trade and digital policies that shape the opportunities for SMEs to engage in trade. And uh, in particular, you've been rolling out your uh, Women Exporters Program through the uh, Alliance, and this is a program to support women-led firms to engage in e-commerce and export. And so I, I thought it would be very interesting for the uh, participants to learn more about this program, what you have learned, um, what would be useful for them to know, and also perhaps for them to hear more about why UPS has, interest, has been interested in investing in uh, this work and investing through the Internet Alliance. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Kathy. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. And thank you so much for to E.T. And, and Kathy and the organizers for the invitation. So let me maybe begin by saying that when we join, when from a UPS perspective, so we are a logistics company, we move cargo across the world on a daily basis, we move approximately 5% of the world's GDP in our network, um, it, 2%, I'm sorry, 2% of the world's GDP on our network, 6% of the US's GDP in our network. It gives us a lot of insight. And, and Kathy, I'll start first with the question about why we did this, right? Why did we launch a women exporter program? Our biggest, uh, when we were looking at how can we make a bigger difference in the communities where we are, our employees are around the world, we realized that there was a gap of supporting uh, women entrepreneurship around the globe, and we wanted to, to make a difference in that area. So we partnered with our UPS Foundation. We launched in 2018 our Women Exporter Program, and then we looked for key partners, and that's where the E-Trade Alliance was very important for us. This was uh, before the pandemic, so, so just to keep in mind that part on, on that area. And when we partner on the Trade Alliance and, and how our Women Exporter Program works, our goal is to create a community around women around the globe where they can uh, be enabled and empowered to launch a business and be able to export. The business connection for us is to for them to do more exporting. Even though small and medium-sized businesses or micro-small businesses play a very important role in domestic economies, they do not play as much in export world. And so we wanted to enable, so three things, right? Micro, small, and medium, women entrepreneurs, and be able to, to increase that pipeline of trade. So what we did, why did we choose E-Trade Alliance as one of the partnerships is because the, the power of community and partnership and concept that came to the table. And so I know as part of the conversation, as, as you all are around the world, and by the way, thank you for your service and the work that you guys do. My dad used to work with USAID in projects. E.T. and Kathy have heard this before, but um, made a difference and changed my life. So thank you. I'm originally from Colombia, but that's another story. But why we partner is because that sense of community really made a difference. And so, so Kathy, when we were looking at, okay, what countries, what area, and what projects, we wanted to add this as part of our Women Exporter Program because we have learned three things. One was that if we don't work together as much as possible as a community, the private sector, big corporation, the, um, the government, 
local government and the U.S. Embassy, we we were less uh, less effective and successful of reaching out to the population and make a difference. And so that was very attractive for us through USAID to be able to work with the embassy. We're also partners with the Academy for Women Entrepreneurship. That's a different program from state, and we have seen also that that power. And so we did. We we wanted to do that part, and then the e-commerce and digital knowledge was very important for us to to make it as part not only we're enabling and empowering for exports but be able to add that e-commerce area so um as we as we have done the partnership with the e-trade alliance together we have trained i'll say over 2000 and i know the numbers someone is going to go back and check the numbers so i'll correct them afterwards we can send the correct ones but over 2000 women entrepreneurs and what we learned so for the usa usaid missions kathy the net that you're asking me to share this we learned, so I said there were three things, right? So we were talking about community and partnership. We learned the other two things are informality and formality. And the, uh, the third one is IT digital infrastructure. So, so just to share with, the, with, the, um, with your audience who are at the countries making this, this change. As we were going through the training from a UPS perspective and working with the different partners of the Trade Alliance, we learned that informality is a big problem in many of the countries uh, where we were working, meaning that we had to make the case to the, to, the, to the micro and small businesses that it was okay for them to choose to be formal, to be able to export, right? Because the regulatory and compliance part of exporting is different than just selling domestically. And I think that's something that, that continues to be a, a a challenge and now let's talk about the pandemic came into it in the middle of things um it, it accelerated changes in in nine months that we expected were going to take longer for from an e-commerce perspective and then informality became more more obvious right and, and more more um more of a challenge and so that is something that we have learned why we needed the partnership with the governments the embassy and the corporation because to reach out to that informal market, we, in some countries, we couldn't do it without going through the local governments who had the information of the people, even sometimes they didn't have it, or local NGOs that knew more, not the traditional chambers or associations. So that, that is something that we learned and that we became also a goal to this training to make the case for formality so that they can enable and be more successful. The second one was the IT digital infrastructure and the skill set. So you, as we talk through the trainings, there's a skill set about doing business online, which is different than just knowing how to connect to your phone or your computer. Um, and that takes a lot of training and capacity building, which I love working with Christian and his colleagues at the Institute because they do an amazing job on that part. Um, but also we realize the differences between rural and urban in many of the countries, right? And that digital infrastructure and the cost of access to data. Uh, in some places, we take, may take it for granted. In others, uh, doing business with just the free was not, a, was not a, enough. Sometimes you need more data to be able to download and that will be more expensive. So it's also something to take into mind that, that needs to be addressed. Um, and I know I'm going beyond my time. So, so just, just the last part is in, in the trainings that we did, you have to create, remember I mentioned the word community, you have to create that community of knowledge and know-how and, and provide the tools for the women entrepreneurs to be able, they have beautiful products. I, we learned that, I love it, that the, the entrepreneurship and the innovation is amazing and, and the passion. So you have to give them the tools to be able to have a format on how to enter into the compliance world and be able to export through e-commerce, how to connect with customers because the pandemic changed that they had an outreach to customers that were beyond their country, right? Uh, in other areas. So what were those tools that were needed to understand how do they remain competitive selling to others through the, the, the web that it seems easier, but then you have to move the product from point A to point B and understanding how that works. So I'm gonna maybe stop there. I don't know if that gives a, a good framework, but but that made a big difference. We couldn't be where we are today without the E-Trade Alliance. Uh, and I, I really appreciate that that goal and that objective that AID has 
in able to make that change uh, in, in the lives. So thank you. Fantastic, Maria Luisa. Maybe I'll pick up a, a quick follow up on what you were talking about. You mentioned that businesses now have to be pretty much digitized and globalized after the pandemic and companies are also getting all these orders from overseas markets. At the same time, we're seeing uh, the trade and digital policy environment becoming perhaps more complex, more fraud, uh, more difficult for SMEs to navigate. What's your current read about where you know trade and digital policies are going if you're looking at this from the perspective of an SME? And what do you think the US and initiatives here could think about as they are working with also governments and, and SMEs in, in navigating this uh, new environment? Thank you, Kathy. Kathy, it's it's fascinating the times that we live in. I think we're concerned from from two sides, or, or looking forward and, and working with with the missions to to have in mind. There is there is the need of consumers to to get whatever they want through the internet and be able to access access it easy and affordable. Uh, there is a challenge for the for the businesses as now that we're beyond the pandemic that consumer behavior has changed how they manage inventory has changed it's a whole different concept and then there's a challenge as you mentioned of government policies right there's some that are going back to to some protectionism they don't know how to regulate a new world a new consumer world a new business world and i think what worries me the most is for us to drop the ball on the compliance part of about or the education the capacity building the constant capacity building for small and medium-sized businesses because they're here to stay and we need to give a, also the opportunity for those in the informal side of the economy to be able to enter this way to the economy um, and help ex spread more opportunity to the population and and the pol if the policies become too restrictive in some countries or too or not acknowledge the reality of the change of speed and movement of cargo across across the world, that becomes a challenge. And so the missions have to be aware of how how do we help on the constant training and education of a small, medium-sized businesses so they understand how they can be compliant to be part of the world, but also the conversation and the policy recommendations that we give to governments about what does it mean to have international trade. Trade is not the enemy, I know. I get some pushback sometimes, but trade actually elevates more the communities, more people. And so, but how do we do it in a way where everybody has access to trade, right? And 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 that's where digital trade makes the big difference, uh, because because it's easier for you to to you don't have to have a brick and mortar place to to be able to sell your good and then empower yourself. You can do that through the internet now you need to have a whole infrastructure behind it and that's where the community comes and helps so i think we're in, in interesting times uh, and and some regulations is still in some of the countries where their these missions are reflect still the way of doing trade in the 20th century and they have not been um uh, uh, updated and so that that does not match with the consumer behavior or what the businesses needs are or the government needs themselves are but they their way of of regulating or changing regulation sometimes goes to one extreme or the other so i think we need to be as a community have that sense of how do we manage the next five years um i, I was in a in a in a meeting for example with the ministers that handle a small and medium-sized enterprises from latin america first of all that's a new right a new title or a new ministry that before didn't exist we were talking 10 years ago and they were talking about informality and formality and how governments are not they were talking about how to make it easier for people to choose to go into the formal economy um because they were losing opportunity missing opportunity that's the type of conversation that we need to have across the globe and and provide that provides more transparency and consistency takes away corruption and takes away some of the challenges that msmes face thank you Kevin. fantastic thanks so much that's very very useful and i think uh, very pertinent also to east africa where chris is uh, uh, running brighter monday and uh, chris uh, brighter monday has completed uh, two programs now with the internet alliance actually uh, training hundreds of smes 
in, uh, in East Africa to um, engage in e-commerce, and you're about to start a third program soon enough. Um, so I think interesting to hear um, why Brighter Monday has decided to invest in this um, this work um, with the Egypt Alliance. How is this kind of helping your corporate objectives? And then what these programs have, have been all about? Like, why have you um, decided to uh, carry them out the way you, you have, uh, targeting perhaps the a certain segment of companies and uh, what kind of informed the design choices as you as you started with the alliance thanks so much thank you Cathy, and, and and thank you all for listening in um we were really excited to share some of the insights we've gained from this project perhaps just some context to color the conversation a uh, brighter monday kenya is part of a, a group of organizations that operate across the continent uh, under the africa talent company and our kind of a key mission is to solve or to bridge the talent gap in Africa by by uh, um, by of offering unique homegrown solutions. In addition, our goal is to develop and connect great African talent to work opportunities. Now, additional context for you is that in, in a year, um, we get about uh, 2 million people coming into the workplace. Today, we have at, at about 25 million, and I'm just talking about Kenya specifically, 25 million worth of a labor force and we're looking at about a million point five to two million coming into the labor force every year looking for jobs we cannot actually fulfill all those jobs as an organization the other thing to perhaps give you some additional insight is i give i give an example of one particular job listing on our platform that of an accountant which we received about 150 listing opportunities but however we received 40,000 applications to those 150 listings. So it means there's a whole delta of people who did not get selected for that accounting job. So what do we do as an organization? We're concerned, obviously, that people are visiting us. We get 30,000 visitors daily, and they're looking for these very minimal, uh, limited jobs. And so as an organization, we chose to then play our part in offering a homegrown solution, and, and then uh, we, we found a partner in the E-Trade Alliance um, to offer us the opportunity then to power the e-commerce sector, um, MSMEs, and, 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 and train them in the space of e-commerce because we found that in training them, they're able to start businesses and therefore create jobs. So it's another way, roundabout way of us creating jobs by, by, by offering ourselves to train at scale. And the question is, why E-Trade Alliance? Um, what the E-Trade Alliance has offered us through USAID as well is given us the ability to move with confidence and and then uh, because we're able to leverage the partnerships across across the continent they have been such a big partner in in knocking on some big doors that have allowed us then to be able to really move forward with confidence offer programs that are robust um what we have seen is that through the partnership we've continued to be able to scale um what we've been able to do through the partnership is engage a number of sectors we've in, engaged um, the government and again with the with the support we were able to reach the highest levels of government we've able to we've been able to reach local ngos we've been able to reach private sector some of the largest e-commerce organizations in the region um we've, we've talked to payment uh, payment platforms logistic platforms financial institutions and and to be honest we might not have been able to do this ourselves and so that perhaps will give you a sense as to why it was really of value to us to partner with them with this, this ecosystem. If you'll allow me, Cathy, um, I'd like to share with you some statistics as to what we've been able to achieve to date. Um, I don't know if, that, if that's okay. Yeah. Of course. Thank you so so just, just, so just to give you a sense, uh, our, our ambition uh, through this project was to train a thousand young people, young entrepreneurs, and, and the goal was to target 40% of female the 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 goal after the training was that we onboard 600 young entrepreneurs into e-commerce platforms and as well as engage this the key stakeholders in the ecosystem and the target group was about 18 to 35 and our focus was largely in nairobi and its environs um just to give you a sense as to what i was saying earlier we had to we had to scope out the market and engage the whole ecosystem and some of the partners i've mentioned before were very critical um, we also had to do a proper curriculum for this project, and we also had to then mobilize youth. Remember, I mentioned we get 30,000 visitors daily, and so really working with our partners to really stream this number down to, to individuals who would actually benefit from this program. 
our program focused on introduction to, to, to e-commerce strategies around uh, business, how um, allowing them to understand the e-commerce landscape, offering them insight into digital marketing, and then introducing them to different platforms, the best platforms in the market that were then able to then offer them an immediate insight into how they would then be able to set up their businesses. What I'd like to share with you, uh, Kati, is some very interesting statistics that came up. In terms of registration, we certainly received more mail applications for this project. However, what is an interesting thing that we came ac across further down is that more women actually completed the course. So while we received more mail applications for the course, finally, at the end of it, when we looked at the final numbers, we received more women um, uh, uh, um, completing the program, which then t t told us and, and continues to show us the power of really empowering women entrepreneurs um, um, and, and, and other diverse groups that, that perhaps a lot of times are not um, sufficiently supported. Um, again, in terms of the program design, the focus really was identifying individuals who uh, to a large extent have set up a business but have never um, have never learned how to perhaps um, leverage e-commerce. In addition, um, they were they had to be within the the age group 18 to 35, which a lot of times happens to be the the demographic of people coming into the workplace. As well as um, the focus was Nairobi, largely because of the infrastructure, the ability to quickly leverage technology. But the goal is further down to um, to to explore um, other regions. Um, I don't know, I'm going to pause there. Um, again, just allow me to thank Michael Poor, yourself, Kati, the support has been truly immense and, uh, and we, we've truly benefited from, from the partnership thus far. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about some of the other challenges that, um, that uh, we, we, we experience and that, that we've learned from. There's a question here around sharing success stories of collaboration between members of the E-Trade in some of the countries. Um, is, that, is that a question for me or perhaps Kati, back to you, then you can, we can pick it up from there. Yeah, we can probably pick up some of the questions um, as we go. Uh, but Chris, maybe uh, to follow up on that, that's fantastic uh, uh, numbers that you were showing there. The um, uh, what as you're going forward in the with the alliance, what the, are you thinking of kind of tweaking or changing? Are there some some things that you have uh, learned that you might um, uh, change and um, and modify uh, in the next times around? Absolutely. Um, so I guess doing a project like this, we obviously it was a pilot. We learned very quickly that to a great extent, it was the first of its kind. Um, Kati, we were the first um, individual, we were the first organization to be able to bring the ecosystem together for the first time. Um, we were surprised, to be honest, that we were the ones bringing in all the e-commerce players into the same room, large, large um, organizations like Facebook, Google, um, Jumia, uh, Gigi had never been in the same room uh, alongside the payment platforms, alongside the logistic companies discussing um, discussing challenges. So these are some of the stakeholder engagements that we were able to um, facilitate through this program and because of the monies that we were able to leverage. However, your question around what we would tweak is that we would do a lot more engagement. Uh, what we found along the project is that we then ran, ran out of steam because of obviously the funding to be able to drive a lot more engagement in the industry we feel is an opportunity to bring and, and be part of government and policy at a larger, to a larger extent, because um, again, um, government moves at a particular pace and we felt as private sector that we were driving a lot more conversations. We felt as an opportunity as well um, for these young people to leverage loans and grants because they, so basically the project was also supporting them to get onto a platform. But a lot of times the challenge in terms of scaling is that they don't have enough funding to then actually power their, their, their businesses to the next level. We saw an opportunity to connect some of these MSMEs and small businesses to the global, uh, global market. So um, an opportunity to perhaps arrange for virtual trade fairs um, where we can actually showcase and even compete and showcase great, great um, MSMEs that we've come across and really power them to the next level. And I know um, perhaps there's been variation of this kind of um, of this kind of projects. Um, we we also saw an opportunity, perhaps like I said earlier, to really be part of of, of policy making, and I think that is something that we would be re really keen on doing. The other small thing that we thought we felt was, was was important, and perhaps I just jump into that page, was that um, we felt as though there needed to be a hybrid approach in terms of delivery. 
Um, to a large extent, the project that we delivered was, was digital, but towards the end, we saw the opportunity to actually go to where the traders are. So instead of calling for an application for people to sign up, how about we go to the, the trading areas and actually storm them and set up tents and actually work with bigger, big, big telcos uh, who we actually were able to bring in as partners and actually pair them and I mean, and, and actually pair digital with actual um, uh, physical training. Because the challenge that you have with these traders is that there's an opportunity cost between leaving their businesses to actually go and start learning. And, and a lot of times we saw a lot of drop-offs. So there's a big opportunity there that we can actually go in hundreds of them in one one facility ask the community around there to to arrange for us one or two hours where we can put put them in a in a hall quickly educate them on on e-commerce opportunities and then send them back and then perhaps come back another day to, to to capture stories actually show them how to take pictures so that was a big lesson for us and towards the end what we did is we actually went to pivot organizations and that's how we were able to quickly even meet some of the numbers and surpass them so this is a big a big um, a big shift in the approach that we would probably embed in in a, in the next phase back to you Cathy. fantastic very interesting to approaches really practical on kind of meeting smes where they are and we've been also in the alliance always thinking about this in terms of the digital journey that smes are on you know that uh, there's not one size fits all solution and we need to work with SMEs at you know they have many very basic levels or or market uh, kind of physical uh, operating physical stores um, and then of course with SMEs that are very advanced and doing uh, what we're ET was mentioning uh, leveraging AI and and so on already in their businesses and and they're mostly kind of purely pure digital um, pure place um, Christian you have some of these uh, digital pure place in in Latin America many uh, uh, e-commerce unicorns as well there. Um, and um, U.S. e-commerce institute have done a lot of great work with the alliance throughout Latin America. Many many waves of SME capacity buildings uh, and trainings, and you've been also as um, e-commerce institute rolling out these um, e-commerce days already for almost 20 years in Latin America that bring together the ecosystem that Chris was talking about in, in East Africa. That's more nascent there, but it's very um, established in Latin America. And now you're bringing these e-commerce days, uh, including from the Internet Alliance, um, uh, to uh, Africa, actually, from Latin America, which is a, a fantastic um, uh, initiative. So, you know, I think you have a lot of lessons learned as the kind of leading association for e-commerce, uh, e-commerce training in Latin America. And it would be interesting to hear more about the rationale that e-commerce institute had to partner with the Internet Alliance. Like, why would you? Why would you uh, need to partner with USAID you know, on top of all these uh, many, many partnerships that you have in the region? And um, probably interesting to hear more about your um, experience with the Alliance in terms of creating programs, what you have also learned, and then more about this um, move to, uh, to, to Africa, um, to bring your capacity buildings uh, to Africa, uh, what, what that is all about. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cathy. Uh, thank you for inviting us. Um, to share the experience uh, to Cathy on behalf of uh, E-Trade Alliance and, and USAID and it's a pleasure for me to be here with, with you all sharing sharing knowledge and experience. Uh, I'll, if, if I may, I'll, I'll start by, by the latest uh, question or, or remark you made. Um, why Africa? We are seeing, we started nearly, as you said, 20 years ago, um, the first e-commerce day was in Argentina in 2007. That was the year the iPhone was launched. So we made we make plenty of jokes about you know the similarities. Um, so what we are seeing in Africa now, after our, uh, our experience of, of the last year or so organizing the the first e-commerce day in Kenya. Uh, there are many similarities in Africa in terms of opportunities, infrastructure gaps, and the, the potential um, against the actual development. Uh, very similar as the ones we saw in Latin America 10 or 12 years ago, okay? Uh, but now there's an opportunity of leapfrogging because, you know, we are where we are, we are in the in the AI era, so we have we have more knowledge and more tools 
to leverage and to accelerate what we did in Latin America in other parts of the world. So basically, we have a playbook. We, we like to see ourselves as a, um, as a platform uh, in which if we have more service providers and we have an ecosystem which is stronger, we will be able to build more ecosystem, engage more people or empower more people through training and education, which in turn will empower businesses, which in turn will empower countries and foster development. So basically, we've been in that trade for nearly 20 years. So um, why partnering with the uh, E-Trade Alliance and USAID? Because it, it's, um, it allows us to take that knowledge um, and uh, the lessons learned in Latin America. We have, as you said, we've seen in Latin America tremendous growth in, in digital commerce. Um, not only, of course, we have a few lighthouses, unicorns, um, and, that's, and that's an important part. Uh, but also, we around those unicorns, there are ecosystems built of suppliers and also of uh, small, uh, micro, small and medium-sized businesses that have been benefited from um, what we did in terms of ecosystem. So we we are prepared to do the same. Um, the model we are firm believers in the model of co-investment and leveraging. Uh, leveraging resources, experiences. Um, in terms of uh, what we have to offer to missions, um, USAID missions, we we are we are specialists in in um, tropicalizing or localizing um, our playbook, our model. We run uh, we run e-commerce day events and training in 18 countries in Latin America plus Africa. So we know how to adapt. There's a common core. There's you know the, the Pareto is, is always is always helpful. But then you have to uh, fine tune that uh, 10 20 percent that makes it local. So we know how to do it. We've been doing it, and also we cannot do this alone. So that's why. Uh, our partnership with the Trade Alliance and, and USA has been very fruitful. We run a number of initiatives since uh, 2019, uh, especially targeting un underrepresented groups in Central America. We run a, an e-women uh, initiative with training. Um, we approximately we reach 70,000, 75,000 people a year with our activities. And in the last uh, three, four years, we've been working with the E-Trade Alliance on expanding uh, that reach. Uh, what's next for us? Um, we are working on a project. We have developed uh, an artificial intelligence tool uh, where we, we fed the tool with every training course run by the e-commerce institute by every business case, which is a, an important part of what we do, uh, is success stories. So everything is in there, in the tool. We see the tool uh, as the potential co-pilot for uh, micro, uh, small and medium SMEs all over the world. The tool is already uh, available in 90 languages. Uh, so, and we are looking for partners in order to be able to localize this tool uh, and to adapt it to, to your region. But that's a very interesting project that could be piloted, uh, just to give you an example, could be piloted with, with the missions if you are interested. So, and we, we've got that ready. So we, we keep moving. We have made this, um, we have made this effort of building ecosystems um, sustainable. So our model, and that's an important part, that's why we look at co-investments, because once we start the thing flying, we make sure that it stays uh, airborne, so uh, we, in, 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 its own, uh, in its own terms. So that's the model we did for the, for the, training, for the training arm of the Institute and also for the, for the events and the and conferences. Uh, what do we need or what we are looking for is, is not only investment but also the 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 capability to to pull 
big companies, especially for our initiatives in Africa, that could be act as uh, that could act as um, as lighthouses, and that's how we did it in Latin America at the very beginning. And once you you have those big companies that everybody is looking at, uh, especially in digital commerce, um, that pulls a lot of of uh, many other companies wanting to be there. So that's an important part, especially we have. Uh, at the end of this year, um, last quarter, we'll have uh, e-commerce day Kenya again. And there are a number of in initiatives for the uh, first quarter 25 on uh, on e-commerce, uh, e-commerce Egypt and, and, and Nigeria. So we have more coming. Um, I think I pretty much covered what, what you what you said, Kati. Let me know. Over Very good, you. Christian. Thank you so much. And um, indeed, you hosted the first um, e-commerce day in Kenya last year and brought together over 300 um, companies and SMEs to learn about the best practices in e-commerce. And I thought that was a really amazing uh, first uh, first um, uh, event uh, in Africa. I'm really glad that you're doing this uh, again now and will, of course, invite the missions as well to, to this work. The, um, uh, you mentioned uh, artificial intelligence, and we've been actually at next week doing some some recent research uh, with SMEs around the world on how they are leveraging AI. And it seems that SMEs are really taking it up very quickly. Uh, it is very accessible. Many are using ChatGPT, and many are finding themselves becoming much more productive in certain areas of business, with the, particularly sales and marketing uh, um, areas. Mm -hmm. And the larger companies are already using AI, for instance, in uh, corporations than in uh, finance. I wonder how you're seeing this on the ground in Latin America. How are SMEs adapting uh, to the era of AI? And what does that mean to their e-commerce uh, development? Well, we see we see it as, a, as, a, as an amazing tool for uh, leapfrogging. You know, with what took us uh, a couple of years uh, to develop, now it's happening very fast due to this. I think first of all, you know, the big, um, the big paid paid media companies, you know, Google, Meta, and all that, have been using AI, and that impacts SMEs as well in the way they deal every day, uh, even though they they may not understand what's what's inside what's what's inside the engine, but they've been living with it for the last couple of years, and now there are more tools, uh, and, and we are trying to democratize as well the use of the tools um what we see is not only for sales and marketing but now to make better decisions more informed decisions all the information is is there so what we are looking at is at training or pro provide training and awareness on, on how the prompting world works you know everything is about prompts so the, and the right question. So there's still something very human about it, which is, you know, what kind of questions you ask. But we see a tremendous opportunity there, and we are running pilots uh, in in small sets of our community and our ecosystem, and it's working really well. Uh, it's a great tool to use as a co-pilot to make decisions on what technology uh, you may uh, you may incorporate that you are not aware of in terms of suppliers as well it's moving very fast you know and the environment the the digital commerce uh, environment of suppliers it moves very fast everything is about ai now especially targeting uh, consumer behavior so now s small small companies may access uh, through uh, software as a service providers you know technology for uh, um that was uh, unimaginable in the last couple of years so we see a tremendous opportunity there and we, we will be playing there as well you know with this with this project i, I mentioned fantastic thank you so much um i think we are starting to have many uh, questions in the chat and thank you very much for posing uh, those uh there's a question about the number of projects that the alliance has completed uh so somebody will have to keep me honest but uh, we have all together um for the latest count, 82 uh, projects around the world. Uh, some of them are policy dialogues, others are, are training initiatives like this, uh, still others are uh, access to finance types of more technology driven initiatives and so on. And um, there is, uh, we actually have a dashboard and I'll put some success stories also in the chat that we have compiled on our 
website, both at the project level as well as at the level of SMEs and SME beneficiaries. And we actually just um, last uh, a month held a, uh, uh, a panel with our SME beneficiaries in Geneva during the World uh, Trade Organization's um, uh, Aid for Trade uh, event. And that was also wonderful to hear from the beneficiaries, what they have learned, and also how they are, in fact, using uh, AI and scaling their businesses, leveraging precisely what Chris, you were talking about. Um, so we'll get back to those. But uh, there is a question from uh, Michael Johnson. I wonder if you want to ask it yourself or you want me to, um, Michael, feel free to ask if you want. Thank you, Kati, and thank you to the panelists for your insights on the work that's being done under E-Trade Alliance. My question that I put in the chat is that, you know, my concern and based on my experience working very deep in the field is that many opportunities are being lost for one person business entities in highly rural areas around the world. And I spent quite a bit of time working in the Kidal region of northern Mali. These are extremely rural areas, and these one-person businesses do not oftentimes have access to these kinds of platforms and opportunities. And so I'm curious as to what E-Trade Alliance is doing to reach these critical people and um, allow them the opportunities to promote their businesses. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, and maybe uh, we'll take, uh, and Chris, hold that thought. We'll uh, take a question from Mesai as well. Uh, Mesai, if you want to ask or? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, I can speak. Okay. So so my question is like, what are the, the, the key policy challenges kind of now hindering progress in this area? Like, uh, in general, I was in the digital uh, trade uh, or e-commerce or specific to you know strengthening or making the best of a public private uh, uh, partnership and what recommendation do you have now to address them so this is a question for both both panelists thank you fantastic well let's take those two uh, first and, and chris uh, turning it over to you perhaps on how to reach um SMEs that are very underserved perhaps remote rural areas and then we come to yeah, Maria Luis as well yeah, and I think this is why I, I raised the concern around a hybrid approach. So to a great extent, the pro the project was targeted at a digital, uh, rather leveraged a digital approach. And we felt that over time that there was a, 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 seg a segment, even within Nairobi, which is a capital city, that was not getting supported. So we went to them. Um, and you find that they don't even have a smartphone. They don't even have um, a, a access to a computer to be able to do the program. So one of the things that we've done, Michael, is that we've partnered with Safaricom, which is the largest telco in the region. And they've, they've partnered with, Safari, with the Brighter Monday around a number of other initiatives. And one of the things we interested them in doing is, one, could you then power us as this project to actually go to these rural areas and offer um, some form of boost in the form of data, in the form of actual phones? And so that has actually worked very well. And we are hoping that if we do get to do this project again, we can actually really turbocharge that partnership so that we can actually go to rural rural Kenya and work with Safaricom, who are actually ubiquitous in the country, uh, to, to really um, uh, access uh, some of those remote areas uh, with smartphones, with, um, with data, as well as actual physical um, facilities that, where we can actually offer those those programs. I think the other one that uh, my colleague reminded me to sh perhaps share is that the issue of diversity and inclusion. So there's persons with disability who again are not sometimes able to access some of these um, solutions that we're offering and so that is another way that we hope that we can also reach them. So I think the goal indeed is to to go as, as deep as we can um, but you can't do this by yourself. You need to you need to partner with with some of the players. Fantastic. Maria Luisa, please. I'm double muted. Okay. I, I think just to, to complement what Chris is saying, what we have learned, Michael, first, don't lose hope because there, there's we can find solutions. And, and the word community is what comes to my mind because Chris is right. You cannot do it alone. What we have seen, um, there's two things that, that, that came to mind to me. One is uh, definitely 
the rural part of the countries need another type of approach. You cannot do a cookie cutter approach to this. And that's where the challenge comes because you have to, to tailor those solutions. Second, you have to think outside the box. That's my joke. I move boxes. Never mind. It's not maybe not that funny. But think outside the box in that the in in Mexico we saw this. There's a a, a community, a, a credit union type of, of families that don't have any internet in their location. They grow coffee, but to do business, they have adapted their customers to move to to meet with them only between 8 a.m. at 10 a.m. their time that's when the leader of the community goes to the town the closest town that has internet access and that's all the business in those two hours and then goes back because they have to go back and work the land um, so there's there's ways to think about it you have to really think outside the box and or how do you approach it and then there has to be a policy conversation to to the governments about Look, it might sound great that you're digitalizing all government services here in the city, but you still need to continue and be intentional about access to digital, uh, to, 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 to um, the web services in the rural parts of the country. And, and I think we all have to have that voice and that's where the policy recommendations and the dialogue that the E-Trade Alliance has it's very important because then we can create a white paper. We can create something in writing that starts creating that change. Thank you. Very good. Um, there's a Patricia as her hand up. Patricia Divecchio, please. Patricia. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, thank you very, very much. Uh, your work is to be applauded for sure. Um, I have a question on soft skills. What are you doing to help uh, your, your population have the right attitude, perception, belief in themselves, confidence, uh, future thinking kinds of skills, the softer skills, that we often forget that I think are key to any small business owner, especially one who wants to really create a sustainable business. Uh, so that's my question. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. That's a really good question, Yaron. We are seeing a lot of this uh, approach actually in the Alliance, uh, particularly with women at firms that oftentimes uh, benefit from that or are, are wanting to learn more about these, these skills that have those, those skills, but oftentimes want more kind of leadership training and more general um, uh, capacity building. And Chris, uh, Christian, you have uh, a lot of this experience in Latin America, so please. Yeah, yeah, just just to to, um, to adapt to what were you saying, which is we, um, many of our trainings uh, focus on, on that soft side as well, through mentoring and coaching and, um, and showing those success stories and best practices of, of how similar, uh, uh, similar cases um, worked in the past. Um, so that, that side, and, and also Maria Luisa mentioned this at the very beginning, I mean, all this kind of, of softer skills training helps to helps uh, entrepreneurs to adapt and navigate whatever may you know uh, the conditions uh, uh, may change so um, we we have experience on that and also uh, two or three programs we run with the e trade alliance focus on that not only uh, hard skills, but uh, but many of them on, on the softer side of skills. I may I may share a, a presentation with some of them later on. Patty. Excellent. Um, so Chris, you also have some experience. Uh, here, yes. Okay. No, I just wanted to share. Um, I realized that I didn't even share with you some of the successes that we've gained from from this program. But certainly, um, soft skills training becomes critical. I think one of the things we've seen is, in some instances, um, some of the, the the some of the participants did not even have email addresses. Some of them did not know 
um, what what uh, platforms exist out there. So what we've seen from the project is that 95% of SMEs stated that the program had enabled them gain fresh income generating ideas, but also 86% of MSMEs that we trained made their first sales online after the training. So out of the thousand plus that we trained, 86% made their first sale online. So for us, this is a great opportunity to one, not just impact them with the technical skills, but you're really transforming their lives and offering them an opportunity to explore a new world, which again, to your point, uh, Patricia, requires a little bit more skill set around positioning, your confidence, because you're now basically coming into a new world. So I think some of the improvements in the program that we hopefully do in the second phase will be around not more than not just the, the technical but also some of the soft skills because we are indeed taking them to the next level there's a piece around financial wellness and whether or not they'll be able to manage the money that they, they now begin to get because we are really taking them and, and, and crossing allowing them to cross borders um, with with their with their with their way with their wares so i think certainly patricia there's an opportunity to even do it better Maria Luisa, do you have uh, thoughts on this, please? Yes, I think I think um, I, I agree. Uh, Christian and Chris are, are correct. I also think the other learning lesson learned that we have had in this process, as you as you look at the soft skills and why the community is so important, is that sometimes you announce, and I think Chris, you had mentioned in one of the prior presentations, you promote this event, and a lot of people either register. But then you have people that maybe don't have the soft skills needed. They're in a different journey of their entrepreneurship or their or their or their process. And that's Patricia, where you also need that community of understanding. And that's where USAID also plays a, an important role in the local partners on identifying those that need the, those that are at the beginning of an entrepreneurial journey and those that are more I call it more seasoned, more more cooked. And, and there's others that think that they want to be entrepreneurs, but they really don't want to be entrepreneurs. They just want to have a skill sets um, and those or soft skills. So, so I think that's something that, that the community is very important for us, how we build those programs. And we have learned it, right? My, our first training, I think 50% of them realized that they didn't want to export, for example, in, in, in our case. And so we had to tailor differently the, the, the skill sets. We do training on how to export and access to finance. And so how we worked, I think that was one of the questions. We partner closely within the alliance with Visa or MasterCard and bring those skill sets. Or, uh, so, so there's different things that, that you identify. And, and as you go through the journey, then the soft skills change, right? And they become more important. So in our case, for example, from a UPS, the more advanced that they go through the training, the soft skills are mentoring that we do our own executives mentor women entrepreneurs about how to present or just as they are mature more into that business journey, right? So, so I think that there's a there's that sense of community becomes important. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, um, I think we've had great, uh, great conversation. Our really goes very fast, um, and I think what what I've really taken from this is that how we need to meet SMEs where they are and, and consider this as a journey. It really starts from, from the SMEs that are not even formal yet and uh, how we can create these incentives working with governments to help them formalize um, through uh, exactly these opportunities to, to engage in e-commerce and in, um, export. And then you know, how we meet SMEs where they are in terms of the geographies, their constraints that they are they have and support them in in this journey and evolve with them, uh, including to, to the use of AI um, and, and so on. And, and as, as Christian, you mentioned, kind of help them lead frog as well, uh, now that uh, there's there's many more opportunities to do that even then before the pandemic. And of course, then work together with with, uh, with the community and with USAID also on the policy issues that without, without which, uh, I guess, uh, without uh, uh, this, this kind of work with with policies, trade policies, digital policies, the capacity building also has only so much payoff, right? We need to align the trade policies to, to support SMEs in this journey. Um, I wonder if with the remaining minute or two, um, whether the panelists may have just, you know, a couple of uh, 
a wish list perhaps how you might want to partner further with USAID, what you see in the horizon for 2025 uh, as, we're, um, as we're going forward in the alliance to our, to our next year and um, where, where you would like to focus your energies uh, with the alliance and with USAID missions. Thanks very much. Maybe i uh, start with uh, Chris and then uh, Christian yeah. and Maria Luisa. Yeah. No, thank you so much, Tati, for the opportunity to share in our story. Again, thank you so much to Michael Poor, yourself, and all the other players who've really worked with us on this journey. I think for me, what was exciting is that we literally felt that we were just scratching the surface on this issue. Um, what we did is unearth the demand. And so we see a great opportunity uh, working with USAID and yourselves, Kati, to do much more. Uh, we want to talk to more people. We want to go outside Nairobi. We want to actually go into the rural areas, like Michael said. And we have been able to bring the partnerships on board. So we're now well well placed to do much, much more with the lessons learned from the, from the first phase. So thank you. Very good. Uh, thanks so much, Christian. Um, Along along the same lines, um, in order to to make this sustainable, um, we need discipline as well. So we need to keep, you know, as you said, it's a journey, and it's a journey for us as well as as, uh, as in our role as of organization. So we need to to keep going, um, and there are many opportunities. Many opportunities arise, and many many challenges as well. We have policy challenges, we have, you know, economic challenges and everything, but we we really look forward to take uh, our knowledge and experience and, and being able to leverage that with other organizations and the E-Trade Alliance is, is the perfect partner. And uh, so we may be able to take it to other regions of the world as the world, there, there, there are statistics and that, that are quite impressive um, more than 50% of what uh, the big marketplace in, in Central and Northern America are selling comes from outside those countries uh, through drop shipping or cross-border trade. So it's moving very fast and, and the landscape is changing. And there are so many opportunities for, for uh, you know, one-man band businesses and also for bigger companies, but there are opportunities for everyone. So. We feel the way is to keep building ecosystems throughout the world and networks, and um, we see many opportunities on that. Yeah. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Sergi, you have a quick uh, quick comment before Maria Luisa concludes? Yeah, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I uh, kindly appreciate uh, your this event because uh, uh, our company which i represent uh, number post global from ukraine we are not uh, still a, a member uh, of uh, e-trade alliance but we applied uh, recently in the end of june and we we do hope that uh, we can contribute a lot uh, to e-trade e alliance uh, uh, interventions and activities because as i uh, as I've heard, uh, uh, our activities, uh, our solutions for uh, M uh, MSP uh, are on the uh, one board, as uh, uh, any uh, uh, speakers uh, uh, said about. Uh, uh, we had even uh, we have even uh, our own uh, school of expert for SMEs, and we try to uh, to share experience, to share opportunities, uh, and uh, you know that uh, uh, nevertheless. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, we have uh, huge uh, problems uh, due to the uh, Russian invasion and uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, electricity shortages uh, uh, and any problems with logistics uh, from the beginning. Uh, our company uh, and our uh, business, uh, our uh, SMEs uh, still work uh, very hard and uh, uh, our uh, e-commerce uh, sector uh, also uh, uh, improve so uh, we uh, we try to uh, to do it uh, uh, and we uh, as, as i said uh, we try to uh, collaborate with the tra trade alliance uh, because uh, with some of uh, members we uh, uh, also uh, co uh, col collaborate uh, with uh, ups in some countries we we have uh, very fruitful uh, cooperation so Thank you so much. Uh, I was impressed. I I'm impressed very much uh, for such uh, uh, insights and uh, sharing uh, information. Thank you. 
Thanks so much, Sergey, and thank you so much for uh, applying to to work with the Alliance. We're really thrilled, and of course, all of us are very uh, cheering for you and and are hoping to support Ukraine and and all, all, all the work that you do. That is more valuable than ever uh, to support us. And so, thank you so much for joining and and uh, for your interest in working together. Uh, Maria Luisa, you have the, the final word. On... I know, I know. In thirty <laughs> seconds or less, asking a Colombian that's very risky. By the way, Christian, congratulations to Argentina winning the Copa America, but I have my nail with my Colombian flag. <laughs> um, Sergi, may, maybe to, to your comment and, and maybe to as a close for 2025, we are really looking inwards to in terms of how do we expand and how do we continue the partnership. I think there has to be, we have to be more intentional in terms of and I think Chris Chris had this comment and Christian too, it, it, the KPIs or how we measure success is that sometimes it's not about the quantity of businesses that are trained, but the quality of those that are trained that continue and, and we help success on, on that part. So, so we have to be very mindful of that part because also for ET and Paul, probably they have to report big numbers up, right, that are being, that are being trained, but, but as businesses and, and for all of you, uh, USAID is how do you look at that quality, right, of, of that training. Second, I think the other thing that we have learned, we, even though we want to train and do it globally, we, we have limited resources. And so, for example, if we want to help in Ukraine, and, and Sarah, Sarah, to your point, one of the things that I look forward to doing 2025 is we're doing more modules that are is that can be at a self pace that we can maybe do the outreach more to others that way so they can train. Christian has the AI. Chris is working on that partnership. How do we help build a community, a, a digital community that can help in some way for those to reach out? However, it brings me to the third one to Kathy in, in 2025 and, and to Chris's point, I see it also more um, micro and small businesses, uh, uh, they require that hybrid approach. They need that human touch. I know we're talking about e-commerce on that part, but you need to have that sense of community and that sense of learning. And so I think for the Trade Alliance and, and for the missions is understanding how do you give that and facilitate that venue to have that in-person and digital uh, training, because some of them might not have the infrastructure uh, they may need the community in-person network because businesses learn a lot from other businesses. But at the same time, then you can help build the compliance and work. Last, I know, so it was not the last word. Last but not least, we do need to give policy recommendations. We, we have to continue doing policy papers, uh, presenting, and, and have it in a structured voice uh, because that makes a difference. I want to thank USAID because at the beginning when the private sector will come to the table, some of the missions didn't want to talk to us because they're like, well, you're just here to make money. You don't want to help. And, and I appreciate that I have seen some of the changes. Uh, I hope that they appreciate too, that all of you appreciate that, that we care because our, our families and our employees are in your country. We care. We want to make a difference. And so I do want to say that, recognize that, and say thank you. That was a lesson learned. Kathy, I went way off time. <laughs> no, no, it's all very, very relevant. Thank you so much. And um, really, uh, thank you, all the panelists, uh, Maria Luisa, uh, Christian, and Chris, for uh, sharing your uh, uh, insights today. Look forward to learning much more uh, with you and, uh, and together going forward as well. So thank you very much. Uh, ET, thank you very much for your support and full support uh, of the Alliance's work. Uh, in Washington, and also thank you all for joining from around the world. Really uh, appreciate your your coming and, and staying all all this time. And uh, we at the um, Alliance are always looking to to expand our reach around the world, bring our partners to other markets, and service of course SMEs, uh, enabling um, that uh, uh, digital inclusion and, and e-commerce inclusion. So we're here uh, to to support the work that uh, other USAID projects are doing and the and the missions as well. And really appreciate everybody joining today. The webinar will be posted online. So if you want to go back and watch anything, uh, it's there on Marketing's website and, and